All right, so today we're going to look at indirectly proportional or inversely proportional. Those are the same thing. Inversely meaning going oppositely from one another, indirectly meaning going the opposite directions from each other. So they have the same meaning behind those words in this case. So indirectly or inversely proportional. So that means as one value were to increase by a certain factor, the other would decrease by that same factor. As one were to decrease by a certain factor, the other would increase by that same factor. All right, well, let's look at an example. Um, as I did with last time, and I think that that might help, we'll start off with an equation so you can see it in a practical use. Let's use the one that's commonly known among people. Let's say I have a certain area. And I know area equals the length times the width. Well, let's say we know that area. Let's say that area was 100. It was set in stone to be 100 square units. And we know that the, let's say it's a square. So all the, the lengths and widths are the same. So let's say that this was just 10 times 10. All right, that makes perfect sense. Well, let's say we doubled the length. The area stays the same, but let's say we doubled the length. If we double the length, this would be 20. Well, we can't leave that 10 because 20 times 10 would be 200. That's too much. We can't double that because then that would be way too much. It would be 20 times 20. So what happened to it then? Oh, well, this one doubled. The only way that this can still be 100 is if this is 20 times 5. Or where did the 5 have to come from if this doubled by 2? So in other words, we multiply it by 2. Where do we get the 5 from? That's right. We must have divided by 2. Remember, going opposite. Multiplication and division are inverses of each other. So we multiply it by 2 to get this. We must have divided by 2 to get that one. All right. That's pretty cool. Okay. Well, what if instead we divide it? Let's divide this number by 10. Okay. So we're still going to keep the constant of 100. Area is still going to stay the same. It's going to stay constant at 100. Let's say we divide this by 10. We end up with 2. Well, what would this have to be then in order to get 100? 2 times what gives you 100? That's right, it's 50. Well, if we divide it by 2 here, divide it by 10 there, we must have multiplied by 10 on the other one. That's the only way we could have gotten 50. So as this one increased, the other one decreased. And as the first one decreased, the other one increased. These are indirectly proportional or inversely proportional from one another. So length is inversely proportional to width. Huh, that's a cool concept. So we can see that as one increases by a factor, the other must decrease by that factor. And it's not an addition and subtraction thing. That is a common mistake for people. Whenever you're looking at proportions, you're gonna be multiplying or dividing every single time. So, all right, let's look at how can we use this in a practical sense? Well. Let's say I know that the pressure is 100 and the volume is 10. And then when my pressure decreased to 50, well, my volume became 20. I want to know what is the relationship between pressure and volume. In other words, can you give me the equation to always know what the pressure is if I know the volume or know what the volume is if I know the pressure? We can. This first thing, first, we need to see if these guys are inversely proportional. Now, this looks a little different from the directly proportional if you've seen that in another video. So with the inversely proportional, we're comparing these two things to the inverse. That's how we would set it equal. What I tend to tell people to do though instead is to multiply these two numbers. Now let's call this P1, V1, and P2, V2, just to differentiate between them. So pressure one, volume one, pressure two, volume two. Okay. So we're gonna multiply P1 times V1 and see what we get. So when we do 100, times 10, let's see if it equals 50 times 20. 
And if we do that, we actually see that they equal both 1,000. So yes, in fact, we actually do get the same value. So these two things are inversely proportional for one another. How does that look different from directly proportional? Directly proportional, you divided the numbers and they equaled on both sides. With inversely proportional, you multiply these numbers and they equal on both sides. Very careful with that. All right, so hmm, now that I know that, do I know what the constant is? Well, actually I do, I know what the constant is. Remember when we looked at area equals length times width? Area was the constant. It's what we got when we multiplied the two pieces that were indirectly or inversely proportional for one another. Same thing happens here. When I multiply these numbers, I get 1,000. That's actually my constant. No matter what, when you multiply these, you have to get 1,000. When we looked at the directly proportional, um, for you to go back to that video if you need to, um, notice that instead of multiplying, when we divide these numbers, we'll have the same, we'll have our constant. That's why we set it up as a division problem to see if they actually work. So let's see what happens when we do this, shall we? So we know that our constant is 1,000. That means that whenever you take the pressure and you multiply times the volume, you automatically will get 1,000. So let's say I know that the pressure is equal to 20. What's the volume? Well, 20 times some number has to give me 1,000. So the volume must be 1,000 divided by 20. Then we can end up with 50. Oh, isn't that what we got over here? Just another way to check to make sure it's working. And that is inversely or indirectly proportional. So if you see that as you increase, uh, as you increase one, the other decreases by the similar factor or the same factor. Or as you were to uh, decrease one, the other would increase by a similar factor. Then it is indirectly or inversely proportional. You check to make sure by multiplying your two pieces of the puzzle to make sure they're equal to the same constant. Once you do that, you can now solve problems with that. And that is indirectly or inversely proportional. See you soon.